Hi everyone, I'm Drew Stepik. I'm the owner of Godless, which is an independent horror bookstore. I also own a services company called God Plutonium. God Plutonium offers services for independent authors and publishers, like designing cover, formatting books, building e-commerce solutions, making brands, building merch, etc. Since Godless is more or less a DIY site, where authors upload their own work and format everything and design everything. I get a lot of complaints from customers. The biggest complaints are it's formatted wrong and I can't read it. The cover's wonky and totally pixelated. So I wanted to start doing tutorial videos to teach you guys how to do this stuff really, really, really easily. On this first episode, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up a wrap print cover on Amazon. It's a really easy and quick process. And if you follow these steps, your solid goal. Here we go, Flip Mode Squad. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, if you have a properly formatted book, which I will do in another tutorial for a later time, go to Google and search for a KDP cover creator. There's the, uh, the URL for the destination you want. I will put it in the description. It's really easy to find. So you're gonna wanna do a paperback. At least we're gonna do it for this example. You're gonna wanna do black and white because we are doing a book, a novel. Uh, for paper type, we wanna do white paper. I prefer white over cream. It's your choice. Uh, we'll do page direction from left to right because that is English. And we will use inches as the measurement and we will do a six by nine book, pretty popular. I wanted to do a page count of 250 pages because I can show you the spine and it's important that you see how that works. So now you calculate dimensions and what we're looking at here is our template. If you look on top, we've got all the measurements listed out below that, but we don't really need to know that unless you're gonna set up this in Photoshop yourself. But you can just go over here to the left and download the template. How about that? Okay, go up here and download that template. Actually, unzip it, go into your download history, find that zip file and unzip that bad boy. Okay, there it is. Unzip. Now open up this folder and right click on the PDF, not the PNG, and open that in Photoshop. Now you see here are the measurements of the template file. Make sure you have a resolution of at least 300 PPI. That's really important. If it's less than 300, it's gonna look really whack, pixelated, and wonky. So here are all, all the uh, measurements for it. Uh, you can see these lines around the edges. There's the red lines, which are, that's out of scene, so that would not make it onto the cover. Those are kind of like the print cuts. And there's all these other lines that kind of back it up and make it make sure you get it centered and correctly done. So if you look at all of these different measurements, you're gonna have to do something to set this up properly because you don't want a whack cover. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I circled this. Uh, remove this template for later. You don't necessarily have to do that because you're going to uh, compress this into a PDF anyway. Okay, now we're gonna begin setting this up so we can lay out over it. So the first thing I usually do is over the template, I start a new layer and I kind of black out the barcode. You know what I mean? So you know where that is when you're doing placement for when you get to the cover. So you take that layer, you put it right there, and you make sure that that's covered and you know where it is because we are going to put a, a background over this, which is usually gonna be mm, like a, a black or some color, just so we have a background where we can do the, uh, the guides for. So add a new layer in Photoshop, take it down underneath the barcode. I usually do black because it's, you know, popping with the, get the guides and fill that layer. Uh, make sure it's over the, the template that we downloaded from Amazon. Go to fill, fill that in. Okay, so now we got that. You can turn it on and off, see where you are. 
Okay, this is one of the most important parts of laying out a template and a cover. Go to View and select New, go to Guides and select New Guide, right? Pop that up, do a vertically or horizontal first, whichever way you want. And set these guides up over the entire template wherever you see a black line. It doesn't have to be exact. It, it's really tough to do it exact, but uh, you should try and, and, and get these everywhere. I'm speeding this up now, total hyperspace, because it takes a long time to kind of do this, but I'm telling you guys, it's super, super, super important to get your, uh, your gutters and everything correct. So do this for every single black line around the edges, especially do it on the spine. Okay, now we get to the meat of this tutorial, which is kind of like laying out your cover. You essentially make the background black, you make that visible so you can see it and you can see the guides are over the top of it. So it's, it's not invasive and you don't have to try and lay it out around this crazy whack template that's all these wacky colors. So the first thing you wanna do is choose a font to use for your titles. And I recommend using the same fonts for your titles uh, on your spine and on the cover. Um, I wanted to do a color so this pops for white. I mean, you, you can change this. I recommend using really clean fonts. I'll get to that in another tutorial as well um, because I think it's important that you do that. Now I copied this title, even though I'm gonna lay it out differently, and I, I turned it sideways using the rotate tool uh, and I put it on the spine. Make sure 100% that you get that small enough so it fits on the spine. This, this new book coming out called, you know, The Big Gross Monster everyone's talking about. Okay, so what I did here is I copied this layer and I'm dragging it down to the bottom so I can put the author name in it. Also very important, our author name is Chad Hercules. I mean, what else would it be? Chad Hercules is like the most awesome author name ever. So drag that down and make sure both of these, um, both the title and the author name are aligned correctly. So they come off the total spine. Now, I wanna get it in the center. So it's like when you look at the, the spine of the cover, it's directly in the center, you know what I mean? And we also go back, turn off your background and make sure that your title and your author name are both in that white area. You have to make sure. People get flagged all the time on Amazon for not fitting that part directly in. Um, so I, I changed these colors just so we, I can show you where it is right now. So make sure that you fit in between those red lines. Okay, uh, turning the colors off, turning the, the background back on. And now I'm gonna do uh, essentially a, a really quick text treatment for uh, the cover. Text on covers is really important, and that's why I want to do uh, an entire tutorial around that. Because I think that I'm not doing it justice by just putting together some really quick title here called The Big Gross Monster, which is my next book, by the way. Um, so I just copied these layers. I'm using the same font overall. Uh, a lot of people like to mix and match fonts, especially if they have a, uh, an author font that they like to use. Um, so I'm just kind of positioning this and transforming this so it, it looks something uh, that would be on a book cover. I, I don't want you to think this is something that I would necessarily lay out in a book cover. I'm just doing this for tutorial purposes. Like I said, I'm gonna do a full tutorial on uh, text treatments because they're super important. You always, always, always wanna make them as clear as possible. So. I'm just lining this up right now, giving you an idea of what this should look like on a cover. Uh, the placement's not really super important right now uh, because this is just to show you how to do these other parts of this book. But I did it anyway because I wanted to show off my new book, uh, The Big Gross Monster. A lot of people are talking about it on the uh, on MySpace. Because <laughs> it's MySpace. Uh, so just pop that in there. I, I, I sometimes uh, kind of do tricky things with the, uh, the the fonts, like I'll pull them in and pull them out, um, so they're not completely uh, aligned. But that, once again, 
not important right now. So what I'm doing right here is because we're using the same font for the, uh, the author name, make sure that's in front of the black layer. Copied it twice uh, because I deleted it like a moron. I wanted this book to be called The Big Gross Monster. So Chad Hercules, that's our author name. He's super rad. A lot of people are talking about him. Gets all the babes. <laughs> Little scumbag. Uh, so Chad Hercules up there. Uh, I put, I'm just, once again, the, the placement purposes aren't important here. I just wanna show you how to get this template in check and ready to go. So let's make this smaller again for the big gross monster. Pull that down there. And for all intents and purposes right now, uh, I'm gonna select all these except Chad Hercules, and I'm gonna pull those down. Whoopsie, looks like I accidentally selected that spine. So let's go back and do this and just pull that down. Uh, you're gonna wanna lay out your image there in the middle. If you have an illustration or something like that, that would be important to make sure that your illustrator knows that you're doing a cover wrap so they can do something that wraps the entire cover. I recommend looking at the books of Clive Barker, namely The Great and Secret Show, which is one of the greatest wrap covers of all time. The original hardcover with the dust cover. It's bitchin'. So now we're gonna do a, a, a kind of a subtitle call to action in the back. These are important and people never, ever, ever do them. Um, so you wanna do some kind of headline on the back that will draw people in if they look at the back cover. I know that this is mainly for e-commerce and it's not like people are gonna be looking at it on a bookshelf, but if you have a call to action that speaks to your book and the title and stuff like that, um, it, 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 it looks better, it looks more professional, and overall it's just a pretty bitchin' thing to do. So what we do here is we do so totally gross for our, uh, our subtitle, our headline in the back. And we just kind of line this up so it looks nice. Uh, so once again, I'm stretching these, these fonts. I, I wouldn't recommend normally doing that because sometimes it totally uh, screws up the quality of your fonts and makes them pixelated and whack when you want all your titles to be super clean. So we go to a line and we align the horizontal centers just to make sure it looks dope. Okay, now we're gonna do the blurb, for the blurb description for the back of the cover. Go over to the type tool and drag it onto your template and do it like that. So it, it, it makes sure it fits into where you wanna go. Make sure you're being very uh, careful not to have your text underneath that uh, barcode. So. For descriptions, I recommend using the cleanest uh, sans serif fonts you can find. Those are like Arial, Verdana, Helvetica, because you want it to look clean. Uh, and especially if you're gonna have something in the background that's gonna be invasive. Like, like if you did get your Illustrator to do a full cover wrap for you, which I recommend, and I'm gonna do a video on that, it's important that the text looks nice. So don't use big, bold, gaudy fonts for this because it's gonna look like a effing mess, like really bad. And you don't wanna ever put drop shadows and stuff on this, you know? Drop shadows or strokes. I, I, I don't recommend usually using drop shadows or strokes for titles, descriptions, headlines in the back, or anything, because it looks gaudy. And people don't like things that look gaudy. They want a book that looks clean. That's why a clean, really good illustration or vector art with this stuff covered over it is gonna look bitchin' and it's gonna look pro. You know what I'm saying? So I justified this text. So it's it's not centered because that often looks whack and it's not justified left because that also often looks whack. Now I copied this layer here so I can do uh, a, a copyright. So, you know, I, I don't know the, the symboling uh, keyboard control, so I just go to Google and I do a copyright symbol. Uh, I don't know how to type. It came up as PNG, so I did one search for a cover I did earlier. So essentially just go down here and find some text and find it uh, in, a, in a, a description of a website 
and just copy and paste it. Most uh, fonts have it, you know, installed, so you're all good there. So it should, unless you're using really gaudy, terrible fonts. So that's your text box that you used above that was justified and pulled, uh, pulled out to be perfect fit for the back cover. Now drag that down. We got our copyright symbol there. Very important, I think. <laughs> I've never seen a book without one. So I normally try and line this up with uh, our barcode there at the bottom. So if I can click on that, just go to text, click at the text tool, try and get that bad boy lined up. Okay, so we have it selected now. Put in 2024 or whatever year it is and put in Chad Hercules. He's our big author. He's the big man. He's the big man from uh, Connecticut. Okay. I want to do something here because people usually put like their uh, their publisher logo or they've got a brand logo uh, to make it look cool. So I, I just went and found some essentially clip art of a picture of Hercules. I didn't use a Disney Hercules because I don't want to get sued. You know what I'm saying? Those Disney bastards. Uh, I want to do a PNG. FYI, PNGs are transparent usually, and they look bad. Even though this isn't Hercules, it's a pretty badass picture. Uh, so, drop that, cut and pasted it over here, made that a lot smaller, and dragged it down to the bottom, making sure that it wasn't cut off, but also making sure that it was in the full bleed, so it looks like it's kind of coming up out of the bottom of the cover. You know what I'm saying here? So we do that and we line it up. We line everything up with that that uh, barcode bar. And we go to, I was gonna say this, but I, I think it's important that you always turn off your barcode layer before you export. Every single time or it's gonna look really wonky. So I'm showing you the template here to make sure you understand that the barcode goes right there or around there. I didn't do that uh, that rectangle perfectly, so my bad. Okay, save as a copy or save as. Uh, I wanted to save this first, uh, saving it into my God Plutonium episode one folder, just starting something new. Wanted to save this as a PSD first. So we have the file, uh, The Big Gross Monster by Chad Hercules, as a Photoshop layered file. Always keep those on hand. Don't save over it with a PDF yet. Now go to Export. Uh, I didn't even want to do that. I was confused. Day. Go to Save as a Copy. Now go down to PDF. Photoshop PDF. Okay. Go to the, you're at the folder where you're saving your assets and go down to compression. Do not compress these files at first. Uh, make sure there's no downsampling and don't, um, don't compress them. You can come back to that later. Uh, Amazon has a file size of 50 megs, I believe. So try and get it as close to that as possible. So if you can get away with that uh, by using no compression, that's what you want because that thing's gonna look crystal clear. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was easy. Go check out all the books at godless.com and if you need a book cover done or a book formatted or something really bitching and out of the park that's gonna sell a zillion books, go to god94.com.